Right now, though, we go to our interview segment, and we're very happy to have with us in studio uh, legislator Yusuf Hassan. It's great to have you on the show. And you look well. Indeed. You look well. Uh, let's just talk about your recovery before we go into, into security and politics. It was December 2012, I think, when the attack happened, and um, you were badly injured. It was just before elections. You have gone through a process of recovery. But you got your seat back and you barely campaigned. Take us through the physical and mental challenges you faced and tell us where are you now? Well, let me start first of all by uh, thanking the people of Kamkunji because uh, I was injured on the 7th of uh, December 2012. Uh, at a time uh, when I was in hospital, nobody believed, many people didn't believe that I would survive. Uh, and come the elections, uh, I was elected. And that uh, really touched my heart. Uh, it uh, brought tears to my eyes, mm. uh, and it really uh, brought joy to, to my spirit. And uh, one of the biggest healing uh, things in my life was the outpouring of uh, sympathy, love, and the generosity of many of the people of Kamkunji, the many people who came to see in hospital, people who said they were praying for me in the mosques, they were praying for me in, praying for me in the churches. That mass of humanity, uh, of kindness that... Uh, uh, really lifted me up and gave me a lot of strength to be able to uh, get through the uh, recovery process and try to get up as quickly as possible. What, before you move on, what made you decide to, to continue and to, and to run for the elections? Was it that outpouring of support? Absolutely. And I felt one of the things uh, when I saw uh, the unity of the people across, uh, across the divide, ethnicity, uh, religion, and so on, uh, the unity. Uh, and the energy coming from those people. I felt that if I had, I either withdrew or I didn't stand, this would be a victory uh, for the perpetrators. Right. And this was not something that uh, I felt that should be given to them. I think uh, one of the uh, things that I had to do was to, to fight that and to stand up and be strong. And uh, to a certain extent, the, the feeling of the population, the feeling of Kenyans, uh, gave me that strength to, to go on and defy uh, the the perpetrators of this uh, uh, horrific attack. I want to come to your physical recovery, but mm. first in an environment where politically there's so much division, in an environment where there's a lot of resentment towards our leaders, even those that we do elect uh, or we vote for, there's still a lot of resentment about the role that they play in leadership. What have you done differently to foster that kind of environment in Kamkunji? I think I was in parliament for a very short time. So for that period, I, I did work for the people. I listened to them. I made changes. Uh, I walked around. I spoke to people. Uh, I was accessible. And to a certain extent, the major problem was that I wasn't seen uh, to be uh, uh, taking their resources away for my own benefit. I had a more represented CDF committee. Uh, I spread around the bursary to the poorest of the poor in our neighborhoods. And uh, people felt that uh, to a certain extent, they were benefiting uh, from my representation. I also spoke uh, and, uh, and presented them in Parliament on critical issues of development, uh, on security and so on. And so I think th there was a feeling that uh, there was a new kind of leadership which was working for the people. And to a certain extent they felt I should continue. To, to represent them. That's a powerful story and not often seen and we must take a moment to analyze those kinds of things and, and see what needs to happen on the ground to foster that kind of relationship. But let's, let's now come to your physical recovery. Tell us, we saw, we saw you, you after the attack and certainly you were ailing. Um, people were very worried, as you said. Um, but look at you today. So yes, you're walking on crutches. Tell us about well, that. Well, it's a miracle, I, I thank God. First of all, I had uh, uh, two major uh, injuries on both uh, my legs, uh, the left uh, and the, both the right and the arm. And to a certain extent, uh, the, the, the left arm and the left leg recovered uh, six or seven months after, after the injury. But uh, I had a problem with my right. Uh, it was uh, fragmented, it was crushed. And after treatment here in Nairobi at the Aga Khan and then in, in South Africa, and I came back, uh, there was a feeling that it was not going to heal and the doctors had suggested that it should be amputated. So I uh, left uh, to, to go to the United States for a second opinion and after another uh, uh, surgery uh, operation uh, they were able to salvage it. 
And um, only two weeks ago, they removed all the, the frame, the pins that were holding uh, mm -hmm. my bones together, satisfied that it is now healed, right. uh, and that uh, within the next few weeks, they will be removing the cast, and I'll be able uh, to get back uh, on my feet You'll again. You'll be walking? Yes, and walk without the aid of uh, uh, crutches. So I moved from a wheelchair situation when, when I wasn't able to move. I moved to a walker, and then I'm no, now using crutches, and within the next few weeks, I hope that I'll be able to walk on my own without any support. That's amazing. Yes. Uh, we come back to more on security, but perhaps at this point, important to note that, do, do you remember the Bring Zach Back campaign? And, and Zach was really working hard to build a hospital that would address exactly these kinds of injuries. And we need to revisit that story and see how far that institution has gone so people don't have to leave the country to get that kind of treatment. The last opportunity to engage on the issues that matter to us, the issues that we want to see contained in the post-MDG goals. So I'm asking you today, what are your thoughts on that? What's your vision for Kenya? Let's start it at a national level. Share your vision for Kenya with us. Hashtag my Kenya. We'll be reading some of those out and continuing this discussion on social media over the week the SMS number of course double two four double two we have an amazing recovery story in studio and uh, I'll be asking you uh, honorable Yusuf what your vision for Kenya is uh, we'll come to that shortly but first very quickly before we go to our next story you were talking about the need to overcome the trauma of an attack even going through the recovery process just how important that is it is very important because the first few weeks of uh, my injury I went through a very traumatic period, a lot of pain, a lot of anguish, and despair at, at, at the moments where you would uh, think, am I going to survive? Uh, am, am I going to, s my, my legs are going to survive? Or am I going to be crippled? Mm -hmm. What is going to happen? And that is a very difficult period that uh, one really needs to pull through. Uh, because after all, recovery is not just physical. It's also mental, it's psychological. So if you're not up to it psychologically and you're not able to lift yourself up and to move on, you can easily give up. Uh, so let me ask you this. What advice would you give to people who are going through this in terms of what you need to do to get through the, that, that mental trauma? I think they have to have hope. They have to have confidence. They have to keep going. Uh, and I think one of the uh, worst things in terms of injury I is that uh, helplessness in which you are paralyzed, you're not able to go to the bathroom, you're not able to eat on your own, you're constantly being helped. And some people uh, become dependent, uh, and, and you really need to get up quickly to start uh, moving around, right. uh, getting things, uh, doing things for yourself, and, and coming back to, to, to the ability and to have the freedom to move around. That also gives you uh, confidence to to, to feel that you are actually getting better and recovering. Right, and many people going through different recovery phases. That's some advice for you. We'll ask you to walk for us in just a moment in studio. Sure. Let's talk security now, and we've seen a number of intensive security suites. I think it's been about two months in Isli in particular. What are your thoughts on the situation on the ground, and what advice do you have for the government in terms of what they should be doing? Well, uh, first of all, I, uh, as a victim of uh, a terrorist attack I fully support and I have in fact uh, asked the president on many occasions uh, that action needed to be taken to deal with this insecurity and uh, I welcome the, the government initiative to uh, uh, launch uh, a major support security operation to deal with uh, uh, terrorism and uh, other criminal uh, organized crime and, uh, right. and, and violence uh, across our country. But uh, as a member of parliament for Kamukunji, I'm very concerned because there has been an intense focus uh, of nine, nine weeks now from the 2nd of April when a major explosion took place uh, uh, in the neighborhood. We have uh, had up to 15 explosions uh, in, in Kamukunji in the neighboring areas. More than 45 people have been killed. Hundreds of uh, people have been uh, injured. And so therefore we, we, we support uh, that kind of operation. But this particular focus on Isli has been entirely uh, targeted uh, to the community in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, it has affected the uh, social life, it has a public life, it has affected the business. There has been uh, uh, documented cases of extortion, uh, documented cases of uh, police, of, uh, police, is, yes. police abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, no action has been taken. The, constitu the constituency, parts of the constituency, particularly Isli, is under siege. Uh, for many, many weeks now on 
whichever road you come into, there is a roadblock and everybody is searched. Uh, and this is affecting life. And uh, to a certain extent, I would say that uh, I would have been applauding the success of that operation. Had we had an audit of how many terrorists have been arrested mm -hmm. uh, and brought to justice. What has been achieved. Yes, how many bombs, mm -hmm. explosives, uh, firearms uh, have been seized by the police. Uh, so that at least uh, in terms of uh, our own rights as a population, we can uh, abnegate some of that because you want uh, security. But to a certain extent, I feel that uh, this intensity and this pressure on the, on the community is not justified and is hurting us both politically as a, as a party, the party that I belong to, but also as a community. And the people obviously feel um, hurt, uh, they feel angry, and they feel humiliated by this constant pressure, uh, breaking into houses at night, waking up families in the middle of the night and so on. What you and these violations are to a certain extent uh, uh, not... Uh, uh, violations of, uh, of their constitutional rights. Right. Mm. You're saying unwarranted, ineffective, and possibly maybe illegal in some instances. Absolutely. So, That's so right. let's talk about what should be done because surely in order to address this situation, the security situation on the ground, we need the people's support. And you're saying people are upset. Um, what is the next step? How do you rebuild bridges with the people in Well, Italy? first of all, I, uh, obviously there is a need to uh, change the strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, have you spoken to the government about I, it and what is there? Is I there have uh, spoken to the government, uh, the, the, the president, many times in this issue. Mm -hmm. I have spoken uh, to the, uh, the ministry involved. Uh, and I do hope that, in fact, there is a, a quick uh, change of strategy to be able to be effective. First of all, we would need to, to develop a good working relationship, a, a, a relationship based on trust, removing the mistrust and the fear that is in the community, you know, exchanging that for uh, a trust uh, and confidence relationship in which people can work with the, with the police. Because can cooperate. Yes, because at the end of the day, you cannot uh, get rid of uh, terrorism or organized crime by purely... Uh, by force. You have to engage the population, mm -hmm. uh, you have to win hearts and minds, and through that kind of approach you can build uh, your investigation, your intelligence capacity, and then focus. It, it needs to be focused and targeted against the perpetrators or suspects. And, but and you not, cannot, not a whole community. Not a collective uh, punishment as right. it is at the moment. Let me ask you this because mm. our time is, is moving so fast. There's calls for national dialogue right now. That's the hot political topic. What are your thoughts on that issue? Well, it is important as a country, as a population, that we should discuss, have an open discussion and debate about the, the problems and the issues that we face. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, the way that uh, court has gone about it is completely wrong. I mean, it has... Uh, presented an ultimatum to the government and to the ruling party uh, to say this is must, this is must, what you must do. Uh, th it doesn't work like that. The what president, should, what the president has been done? working on a, uh, since January on a, on, a, on, on, on a national conference to bring all Kenyans together to discuss this issue, which has now been suspended because it has been politicized. And I think we need to move politics out of it. We need to, uh, to be able to, to look at, at, at our national interests and have a discussion based on mutual respect uh, and understanding, uh, common understanding of all the issues. For example, the issue of the IEBC. Uh, they, this is not an issue for a national conference or a national dialogue. Right. Uh, IEBC is a constitutional body. But going the, beyond that, that should that be discussed to, in parliament. To the socioeconomic issues of the people on the ground, how to move the country, how to develop the country, some of those critical issues. There's no doubt there'll still be a lot of debate on this very question of a dialogue, whether to have it or not. We've come to the end of our interview. But before we do close, would you, would you for our audience, please just show us how mobile you are? How far <laughs> have you come? Would that be all right? Yeah, okay. Thank you so <laughs> <No problem>. much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, from, from literally the, the wheelchair yeah. and, and immobilized, yeah. we're moving. <laughs> I have to use the crutches in order not to have too much weight on okay. the cast. Okay. Yeah, but otherwise. But the cast comes off, you said, in yeah, a couple in two of weeks. Yeah, in two weeks' time. Two weeks' time. And there we have it. Yeah. That's recovery. 
It's great to see that. And, and we congratulate you. Well, we wish you all the best. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank and you. Um, we'd love you to share your messages as well with uh, the Member of Parliament of Kamkunji. Um, do SMS us, 22422. What are your thoughts on this amazing recovery story?